Shalom. First and foremost, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Bashem Rakak Wadash. And double honors to the head apostles of the great millstone that have taught me what I know, including the bishops on down as well, all in through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashem Yahushai. And Yahweh Bashem Yahushai Brakatham to the hundred and forty and four thousand, and including the one third as well that sincerely follow the gospel that we give. And it's your brother Laban. And I just want to address a little of this video over here of Putin saying that he's ready for the nuclear war, which is understandable because I want to show you another article or an article of that matter. Why he's saying that, why I think ultimately he's saying that and he's in the right to say this in the interview. All right. But what I'm going to say is this, though, because we know that um, the mark of the you know what Jacob's trouble would have to come first. So if this is what the Kremlin is now saying, because we know that Vladimir Putin is a very important somebody in the grand scheme of things. So if he's making such a statement on this interview here, then that means we're much closer to the MOTB, to the time of Jacob's trouble, than you can never think. Okay? And um, without further ado, I want to play some of this video over here, and we're going to get into it. Lord willing, you can hear it as well. Ну, хорошо, так сказать, если уйти от вмешательства предвыборной баталии, по факту эскалация продолжается. И такое впечатление, что обе сверхдержавы, Россия и США, играют в то, что в Америке называется «чикин». So there it is right there. Of course, we are ready for this point of view. What point of view is they talking about? The third wall, according to the scriptures, which will be had. But it's not going to come yet, as well as it reads in the book of Matthews. What is it, 24? Yahweh Shah told the disciples that, look, you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars, but the end is uh, not yet. Roughly paraphrasing that, but that's what he said. So, again, we're drawing closer than when we can believe of Jacob's trouble and as well as the mock. All right. And um, as well as we're talking right now, they're building on the digital ID system and as well as they're, um, they're forwarding the CBDC all at the same time. And I just want to bring some some articles out in regards to these things, which is going to, um, you know, bring about that complete world order that they desire. <clears throat> Where everyone's on the total control on a global scale. So now let's get into this over here. And at first, what I want to do is I want to read this article and then I'll read the articles concerning what I've mentioned. And this is the reason why Vladimir Putin, as I am um, sure to believe why he said what he said, why he's ready, because he has no choice but to be ready. Because this is going on. Anyway, it reads, NATO fighter jets get green light to carry nukes as tension with Russia soars. The F-35A joint strike fighter has been certified to carry thermonuclear weapons as tension between Russia and NATO hit a breaking point. A NATO stealth fighter has been certified to carry nukes, including the terrifying B-61 12 thermonuclear gravity bomb as tensions between NATO and Russia hit a boiling point. The F-35A Joint Striker Fighter has become the first stealth fighter of its class to be greenlit to carry nuclear weapons. A spokesperson for the F-35 Joint Program Office told Breaking the Fence, uh, the F-35A is the, is the first generation nuclear capable 
aircraft ever and the first new platform fighter or bomber to achieve this status since the early 1990s. So that's all I'm going to read right here. So if this is if this is what's going on, you have air stealth fighters carrying nuclear missiles all around Russia. You're not going to get no much of a threat than this over here. And this is why the Kremlin himself is saying, which he has to say because he has to defend his people, that he is ready for a nuclear war. Which is bound to happen according to the book of Isaiah 34, according to the book of Jeremiah, if I'm correct, the 50th chapter, and as well as according to the book of Revelation 18. I mean, there's a, there's a plethora of scriptures that I can mention, but just to name a few. So, now what I want to talk about is what I was getting at briefly on this uh, European Central Bank digital currency. The future of money from Breitbart.com. Uh, European Central Bank unveils plans for digital Euro CBDC to be introduced next year. Uh, the ECB outlined its plans for the introduction of a digital Euro Central Bank digital currency on Wednesday, which is projected to be implemented throughout the EU as soon as next year. A presentation from Pero uh, Kaipalon or Sibalon, however you pronounce his name, a member of the executive board of the European Central Bank, published on Wednesday, said that a digital euro, which he dubbed the future of money and could be made available to the public by November of 20. 25. So this is what he said, that they can get this within that period of time, which could very well be the deadline. But let's just say, which could highly likely, as I'm sure to believe, it could be a lot more sooner than, than that. Because, um, you know, remember back during the time of the, uh, the era, the era of COVID that we was under, um, you know, as it should have been, as it was said that when the VCs came out, <clears throat> it should have had taken five years to come up with these VCs, but they already had them waiting in the back somewhere because the time was going to come that um, they were going to tell people to get these, these, uh, you know, jiggity jump, you know what, shots. And, and so, you know, they had them on the ready. Like I said, they had them in the back all of this time. So, again, when we're talking about the, the CBDC and the digital ID format, they can have all of this in, in a matter of time, soon, real soon. And what they're saying it is, just like when they say by 2030, we're going to have all of this done. What they're saying to you is the 2030 plan is, is happening in, in this decade, the 30th decade of the 21st century. All right. And it's happening right now. So. Let's read something else and we're going to get into this over here. Uh, analysis. This is from Epic Times dot com. Cashless transition steamrolls ahead of after major bank closes all branches. Australian made seven hundred and forty six million. And digital payments in 2018, that number soared to 93 billion in 2022. So that's an exponential growth right there of people making these payments in the digital in digital fashion. How much more two years forward? Hence is why by the year of uh, 2024, the year that we're in right now, by October, um, what I could do is now I'll read it. I was going to jump right to the point, but I'll read this. And a new all-in-one mobile app will offer what its developers claim is Australia's first end-to-end -end digital banking platform for the country's 2.4 million businesses with fewer than 10 employees. The announcement comes a day after Bank West announces that it is closing 45 of its branches and transitioning the remaining 15 to Commonwealth Banks of Australia branches going digital only by October of this year. So, of course, um, yeah, they're going to start with 15 and they're going to transition all of them. 
because that is the goal of the elite is to digitize the money. And once the money goes digital, they can identify what, what you're spending the, the money on. OK, and then you will have your ID on a digital grid. It's all about, as we know it to be, control. Government on a, on a total level like, like never before, which, which is what they want. All right. And all of this they're going to do because the Lord have chosen them strong illusions, have given them strong illusions to believe in a lie. So if you trust in these lies, then you're going to fall eventually. And this is why this whole entire system will fall the way it's going to fall, because it's nothing more than a lie in totality and the wisdom, knowledge and, and the understanding of it, which is no wisdom. OK, there's no wisdom in this world. <clears throat> so um, what I want to do is I want to read the book of. Um, Matthews 19. We're going to get the book of Matthews 19. Let me punch up another tab over here. Matthews 19 and 27. And the point is in verse 29. And this is what Yahweh Shai told Peter. That if you forsake all things and you follow me, then you're going to sit on thrones. And as well as if you forsake all things, as it is written in the book of Matthews 19 and 29. And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or fathers or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. You know what I'm going to do? Let me just read from 27 Let's, so we can get this correct. Uh, then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. And what shall we have therefore? And Yahweh said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, and every one that hath forsaken houses, or brethren, all sisters, all father, all mother, all wife, all children, or lands, for my name's sake, shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So there you have it. So we believe on these scriptures as it is written in the book of Romans 3 and 3. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of the Most High without effect? God forbid. Let a man, let every man be a liar, but let the words of the Most High be true. Something like that. Because the truth is already been stated and written. So all that has to be is for time to do the telling to establish these words of truth. Hence is why they're known as prophecies. Events which will surely come to pass. And as I will quote, that we have a more sure word of prophecy. That's why Yahweh Shai said, verily, I say unto you. In other words, truthfully, I say unto you, there is no lie of the truth. So just like I've mentioned earlier before, you can't rely on lies. A lie will have you stumble at the very end, but the truth will always stand. The truth will always be that staff that you can rely on. OK, and we're going to rely on the truth and we'll be able to because it's sure it's consistent. It's always current, just like how the heart beats. If the, if the heart stops beating, guess what? You're no longer current. You're dead. Just like the lie itself. But if you believe in the truth, you'll remain. Now, let me read Matthew's um, 24. And I think it's 32, man. Matthew 24 and 32. <coughs> it's 35. So this reads. Um, I'll start with verse 32. Now learn the parable of the fig tree when its branches is yet tender and put it forth leaves. Ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise ye when 
ye shall see all these things, knowing that it is near even at the doors. And that's the prophecies that we're living out right now. The uproars of the people, um, hearing wars and rumors of wars, and these various different things, even as expounded more in the book of Luke, the, uh, the 21st chapter as well. Uh, Verily I say unto you, again truly, this generation shall not pass until all things be fulfilled. The prophecies, once again, heavens and earth shall pass away, but my word shall not pass away. Why? Because there's no end to the truth. If we believe unto the truth, then we will also remain. Hence is why it reads in the book of John 3 and 16. As it is written, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Simply put. So now let's go back. And now I want to read. Uh, let me see what else scripture I can get. I'll read 29 again. And everyone that have forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life. So back to the point, just to get back on my train of thought. The reason why I pulled the scripture out, because the time is going to come and it's right near and dear to us. It's next door to us. And I'm talking about the time when the mark of the you know what is going to be initiatedly mandated all around the planet Earth is going to begin in Western areas, I believe. And then it's going to work its way all around the world. And when they make this mandatory, as we know, it's going, it's going to be the case on a worldwide scale. We're going to have to give up all of these things that are near and near to us, whether it's businesses that we own, um, whether it's jobs that we, we have that we're making good money on, whether it's your wife and children, um, you know, you may own some land. People still own land to this very moment in time. Whatever it is that gives you the comfortability that it gives you, that you have an emotional connection with, you're going to have to give all of these things up because we ain't going to take the mark. So if you ain't going to take the mark, then you can't have the things which will be had in the new world system for you to keep. Okay. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to have that in mind, which we already do have that in mind already. We're already prepared mentally, especially us brothers um, that have been in this thing for a while. We know that the time is going to come where we're going to have to give every single thing up and appear naked before Yahweh shot. All right. And rely on his words. <clears throat> and if we rely on his words, which by faith, that can only but be the case, then we're going to be able to cleave unto him in that time, as that's written in the uh, the book of Sirach. Yeah, so it's uh, Sirach 25 and verse 12. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So that's how you cleave unto the Lord, by faith, which is what we've been given. We've been given the gift of faith. So when that time is going to be demonstrated, and in that, the Lord is going to be with us, as it is written also in the book of uh, Jeremiah 30. And um, verse 7, if I'm correct, no, Isaiah 33 and verse 6, where it reads that the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy time and the, uh, the, the fear of the Lord is the strength, something to that equivalent. Just to roughly paraphrase, as a matter of fact, let me pull it out and read it. Isaiah 30. Three and six. Yeah. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. And the fear of the Lord is his treasure. There you go. So doesn't it read that the fear of the Lord. Let me go back to it. Because <coughs> the strength of our salvation is going to be the Lord. So to get the salvation, we got to have faith. Um, yeah, let's go back to the Apocrypha. <coughs> uh, 12. 
The fear of the Lord is the beginning of his love, and faith is the beginning of cleaving unto him. So just as well as it reads in the book of Luke 18 now, as this reads, let's begin by reading uh, verse 6. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge saith, and shall not the Most High avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him. That's that diligence, though he bear along with them, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Right. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? And the answer to that question is absolutely yes, because you're going to even have the men that will die willingly for Yahweh Shah. All right. Becoming mortars, becoming a sacrifice. <clears throat> verse four, Revelations 20 and verse four. And I saw thrones and they that sat upon them and judgment was given unto them. So John the Revelator saw this in vision and this in other places too. It talks about how or it reads about how um, the saints will be sitting on thrones and that they will see crowns. So if there's scriptures. Which mentions these things by the different men you know which were were um, appointed to be the prophets and um you know they spoke these words out there and that means that the case is true if a, if a case be established by two or three witnesses then it's the truth all right so it's definitely true that's why Yahweh Shai said verily i say unto you to the disciples that they're going to be sitting on 12 thrones judging the whole house of israel all right the 12 tribes of israel so, again, this is the truth, man. And there is no lie of the truth. The most signs are the power that he should repent of his words. And as well as it reads in the book of Isaiah 55 and 11. Okay. So, these words are true. Just like I said earlier. And I saw thrones and they sat upon them. And the judgment was given unto them. And I saw the souls of them that were beheaded for the witness of Yahweh and for the word of the Most High, which had not worshipped the beast, neither his image, and neither had received his mark upon their heads, excuse me, upon their foreheads, or in their hands. <clears throat> and they lived and reigned with the anointed a thousand years. And it doesn't just mean a thousand years, because in the book of Daniel's, the seventh chapter, it tells you that the saints shall take the kingdom and possess it forever and ever. As well as it reads in the book of uh, Jeremiah, if I'm correct, mentions on how we are going to be the world or we are the world without end. And also to mention as well that there will be no end to the throne of David. So that's telling you right there that the kingdom of heaven, which is going to be the kingdom of us, so-called blacks, Latinos and Native American Indians, our kingdom is going to be eternal. Speaking about eternal, um, the Apostle Paul mentioned that. The affliction that we're dealing with is light affliction. It cannot be compared to the eternal weight of glory. All right. But the rest of the dead lived not until a thousand years were finished. This is the first resurrection. So this is talking about the rest of these other nations after they done served a thousand years of slavery. And um, we're going to let them live and, and um, you know, have their sort of freedom, have you will. But they're still going to be under the authority of the saints. That's all we have right there. And um, also, let's even read Revelations 2 and 26. <clears throat> As this reads, and he, matter of fact, what I'm going to do is read verse 10. Verse 10 is the point. Uh, yeah, this is it right here. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye may be tried. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. You see? So it's written in different places, man. And it's mentioned in the mouth or excuse me is mentioned from the mouth of of the same um individual in this case uh john the revelator on how he seen the saints those that have overcame what they had to overcome 
as he saw in Revelation 20 and verse 4, the aftermath of, their, of what they went through receiving their reward, which was to sit on the throne. All right. And just to mention as well, it's not just the 12 that will be sitting on the thrones. You're going to have all of the elect sitting on the thrones. So much so that the whole nation is going to be a royal nation. All right. So let me read this again. The last half of it. Be thou faithful unto death and I will give thee a crown of life. Right. So there you have it. So it's official that we're going to be the kings of the next world to come over these nations. Now, let's go down and read verse 25 to verse 26 now. But that which you have already hold fast till I come. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, to him will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, as the vessels of a potter shall they be broken to shivers, and even as I have received of my father. So we're going to break these nations with the power that's going to be given from on high to us, from Yahweh Shah. Okay? So we're going to be given power over the nations, which will be our inheritance according to the book of Psalms, chapter 2. <clears throat> so there you have it. It's official that this will be our reward. So when that mark comes in, this devil is going to do what he's going to do. He's going to put some of us into prisons, as, as, it, as it mentions in the book of Revelations, uh, chapter 12 and verse 12, that the devil shall come down having great wrath because he knows that he had but a short time. That's that insurrection which is also mentioned in the uh, the book of Second Ezra, the 16th chapter, in verse, I believe, is 71 and 74. Okay, so again, that's also a truth that we're going to have a dreadful time coming, and as well as even Daniel expounded upon this time as well. So we have three men that's come to my mind now that are seeing the evil day, which is going to be upon us. Okay, and in that same day, the world of Israel will be tried. And um, by that time, we would have already had made the right decision in our mind to make the right decision physically. Okay. And may the heavenly father, Yahweh Bashmi al be upon us to, um, you know, ride on out to the very end with not bowing down to this devil and his agenda, as it is written in, in the book of Romans, the 11th chapter on Paul. On what he said, he said that there's 7,000 men that have been reserved that shall not bow to the knee of Baal, okay, which is parabolic, representing the 140 and 4,000 and the one third of the elect that will not submit to the will of the devil, but rather submit their will to the heavenly father. Okay, so that's that's that. And what I'm going to do is I want to read something else. Um. Yeah, let's go back and read Luke 18. No, 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 no. Well, I don't want to read this. Um. Yeah. So what we're gonna do is is. <coughs> All right. Yeah, this is the scripture that I was thinking about right here. Uh, Matthew 6 and verse 24. No man can serve two masters for either he will hate the one and love the other or else he will hold it to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high and mammon. Exactly. So, you know, when you come into this truth, you got to know that you're going to have to put away this world. Little and little. Because when you first come into this thing, you're still going to have your worldly ways about you. But in time, as time always does the telling, um, you know, that's when things change. And as you're supposed to change, you're supposed to change after the after the image of Yahweh Shai. So that when Yahweh Shai comes back, he sees his reflection upon you. And therefore, by that, you're the livid. And by us. Being his reflection, we have to what? Follow him by by the word. We have to be like him, which we have the the 
the tools, the manuscript, which is the Bible, to be just like him. Okay, as it is written that the whole book is written of him in the book of Psalms 40 and 7. So if we eat the whole roll, just like it is mentioned in the book of Ezekiel, then we're becoming more and more like Yahweh Shai. Then unto our salvation, which he is our salvation. Uh, no man can serve two masters once again, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve the most high mammon. Right. And also what comes to my mind is this scripture too, Revelations uh, 3 and verse, I think it's verse 15. No, it's verse 10. <coughs> yes, verse 15. I know thy works that thou art neither cold nor hot, and what thou wert cold or hot. So then because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. So you either got to be all about this thing, man. Like the Apostle Paul said, he said, um, nothing can, can deter him from the love of the, the Amashiach, Yahweh Shah. Nor height, nor depth, something like that, he said. He was fully persuaded. Because according to the book of Acts, the ninth chapter, which you got <laughs> Al-Azhar, which he confessed, saying that he doesn't credit the words of the apostle paul which we know the ultimate reason why that's the case but in the book of acts 9 and 5 that tells you that he was basically filled with the holy spirit <laughs> so this is why the apostle paul he went through hell and back because he truly believed in what he was doing he truly believed in the ministry man that's why most of the writings in the new testament is of the apostle paul just to mention uh, so then, because thou art lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Right. And also, if you're not about this truth, it's better that you just don't even teach the word of the Lord. Because you ain't fooling nobody else but yourself. And, and speaking about the lukewarm spirit, the lukewarm spirit has covered these camps that are outside of GMS, of course. And what I'm going to say is this. These scriptures is coming to my head. <laughs> Um, but as it is mentioned in the book of uh, Matthew 7, something to that equivalent, if I'm correct. Um, I could be wrong, but there's a scripture that's in my head. And it says, you know, a tree by its fruits. <laughs> I'm not going to go and get it. You know, the camp based on their projection. And what you have. Especially these, these newer caps as well. A lot of them are wearing what? T-shirts with the fringes on it. So what does that really tell you? They're not coming all the way in fully. These T-shirt wearing caps are telling you, based on their projection, is that um, they are lukewarm. The scripture says in the book of Deuteronomy 6 and 5 as well, that... Uh, we have to serve the Lord of all of our heart. Let me pull that out real quick. Uh, six and five. Straight to it. Spelled it wrong. <coughs> Deuteronomy six and five. And thou shalt love the Lord thy power with all thine heart and with all thy soul and with all thy might. And these words which I command thee this day shall be in thine heart. There you have it. So we're supposed to be hot when it comes to the Lord. Everything else has to be put aside. And the first thing should come to mind is to give the sacrifices on that we're giving. Is to do a lesson or to pray. The Lord comes first before all things. And this is what we have to be um, disciplined into doing. Okay, including myself. First and foremost, I speak to myself on that regard. Now, let's go back to the book of Revelations uh, 3 and 15. Because what I also want to say is this, is that you have the spirit of those. Or should I say you have this lukewarm spirit that has consumed these outside camps outside of GMS. And, um, you know, a tree by its fruits as that's written. Because these outside camps, what they do is, is they they um 
when they go and teach the word of the Lord, they wear in the T-shirts. So you have these T-shirt wearing Israelites. And really what they're basically telling you without telling you is that they're about the world. But yet and still, they believe in the truth that they are the Israelites. So they want to combine the truth with the world. And you know what proves that? Because a lot of these camps will put the uh, the rap music in the intros and the outros and and just overly um, gimmickize, if that's even the word, their videos. They're not going to give it to you raw and uncut. I'm talking about the truth. They're going to merge the truth with gimmicks. Gimmicks is really a world, is, is basically a tool of the world. Now, the Apostle Paul did say, right, though I be, though, though we, how did he, what did he say? He said, we are deceivers, but yet true. Meaning, <clears throat> I mean, you could deceive a man to come into the truth. You, you can do that. This is nothing wrong with that. But the point that I'm making is, is that these camps, that a t-shirt wearing camps. What they do is, is they all, you, what you'll see. For the most part, you'll see these guys put rap songs in, in the videos, which hip hop music, rap music in general is a, is a worldly genre of music. Our forefathers wasn't wasn't doing no hip hop back in the ancient world. <laughs> you know what I mean? I mean, I'm pretty sure that, you know, our, our, our ancestors were dancing and, and stuff like that. I mean, you've always had because we're come on, we're a lively people. We're a people of life. So, you know, you would have had our, our ancestors dancing and singing and stuff, right? And playing instruments. As a matter of fact, that's all written in the Old Testament. You know, you could read the book of, um, if I'm correct, you can read the book of Chronicles and you, you'll find it out. But I'm pretty certain that the music that our, our people are into right now, they wouldn't do no rap. All right. They wouldn't do none of that stuff. That's a newly invented sort of kind of music, which has really been... Um, a poison to our people that sort of music has been poison to our people okay talking about violence and all of this stuff man and how you commit an adultery with the next man's woman like come on we weren't talking like that back in the ancient world so that is of today's world and that's what you'll see i mean we can talk about the sakari camp we could talk about um and you know the rest of these other camps that we we, we, we all may not be privy to even including the rest of these other camps that we may not be privy to, okay? They all do the same thing. These t-shirt wearing camps, which you'll find out is, is that they'll put rap songs in their videos because they're really showing you that they're in the world still, but yet they got another foot in the truth. They got one foot in the world, one foot in the truth, okay? So we got to come all the way in. In the book of Baruch, that tells you as well that it was in us to depart from the Lord. So since we found them, seek him 10 times more. So let's just say you're in an airplane and the airplane's moving at 60 miles an hour. It's moving. But guess what? What about if it goes 600 miles an hour? Now you're getting a whole nother experience. It's a whole nother feeling. <laughs> and what you're going to find yourself is you're going to find yourself in the air. By the time it gets to that, that, that sort of speed. All right. So we got to be diligent about this thing, man. This has to be consumed. This truth has to be consumed and it has to consume us. Entirely like it shouldn't be. Oh, well, I'm an Israelite one minute, but then I'm a nigga in the world all the way and through most of the times. No. I'm actually going to do another video on this topic, Lord willing, real soon. So, um. With that, that's pretty much all I have to say, man. The time is going to come when we're all going to be put to the test. Because that mark of the you-know-what is definitely on the precipice. If Putin is saying what he's saying, which he already said it, then that means we're closer to the time of Jacob's trouble. We're closer to the time of, of the, the mark of the you-know-what. And it's closer than what we can ever think, as it is also written for our salvation is nearer than when we believe because we're going to be saved through the turmoil. OK, so, yeah, that's all I have to say on this with that. 
Um, I want to give all of the praises and the glory to the Most High and His Son, Yahweh Bashmi Al Shabbat Shemrakakwadash. And with that, I am out. Shalom.